Okay, I want to review your question. I want to expand it to help all TP parents in crisis and in lesser crisis. You have a child that is in a very bad matzah. And you woke up Shabbos afternoon and there was so much smoke from her cigarettes or weed. In this case, it was weed. And there's other kids' rooms. There's children. There's a baby. There's a, there, it, even during the week, it's hard. Allah has kama bakama Shabbos. Sometimes there's blaring music coming out of the room. And you woke up from your nap and there's smoke everywhere. There's a fan you had. It didn't do anything. She usually keeps her door closed, but now the door was open. And or, if, or if maybe for some parents that that it's the first time it's happening. And the question is, how much can I tell my kid? Can I say, please, when you smoke, especially on Shabbos, could you please not, not you know, you don't have to say the words, not be selfish, not this, that. Can you keep your door closed? How much can I tell my kid? This is a question that we have on all stages of, of crisis. Now, there's a difference between a regular kid and regular chinuch, which you read a regular chinuch book to learn, I have to teach my child. There's a difference also in the age. Am I teaching my child or did I already teach it and they're going through something wrong and they're rebelling? And then there's a difference between someone that we know is in pain. They're struggling. They're challenging, in which case they need different tools. Like the Divrei Yoel, the Satmar Rebbe said that once somebody is challenging, then we drop the rules of Chinuch and we go to the rules of Kiruv, Levavis, being close. And we see that once kids are, are they, they know what to do, and even regular kids, even not such an extreme thing of Chilol Shabbos, they know what to do and they're not doing it. Let's say sings Miris at the Shabbos table and you brought them up to do it, and they used to do it when they were six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. And now they're, you know, a bacher or whatever age, teenagers or whatever age, and they're just not doing it. Once you're doing that, that's not called kinnuk. You taught them kinnuk is to teach them. Now you have to tr- change it to make them want it. That's kiruv. Make somebody want what you have, which is really what kinnuk is supposed to be. Different story. But here in our sugya of a kid who's starting to do bad things. So first of all, I want to commend you. Because it takes tremendous self-control until you waited for group to ask what to do. What did you do? Nothing. You didn't do anything. You didn't take matters into your own hands. And you didn't let your own emotions of, of going crazy take over. You didn't yell. You didn't scream. You didn't say, what's the matter with you? You didn't do anything destructive. You, you, you're under guidance. You waited for our group, or you could reach out to me in between groups if you need to. You waited to hear, we have a crisis. We have a situation. How should we deal with it? So first of all, ashrecha. First of all, that you have self-control. Because why destroy and then come back and say, oh, I opened my mouth. And now she's not talking to me. I blew it. You know, why not find out how to do things in a way that is the proper way to do it? This is obviously nothing that we've been brought up to do. It's not regular chinuch. It's not natural. When you have a kid or any teenager, very difficult. And you have to know how to deal with teenagers in our dar, which is different than when we were teenagers. And we were dealt with differently. And it might have worked, but those tools don't work now. And who says that they don't work now? All the old Zakanim, all the old people, Rebara Leib Steinman Zatzal at 95, 100 years old said, doesn't work. Rebgershin Edelstein Zatzal told me at, must have been 95 years old, 96 years old, every dar is different. The Nesiva Shalom says, just like Hanoich Lenar Api Darkoi, just like every child needs his own Chanoch, Hanoich Ledar Api Darkoi. Every dar needs its own chinuch. And the Chavetz Chaim has a story of a general that went out to fight, and he couldn't understand why are we losing. 40 years ago, we went out with the same same, uh, same knives and, and guns. How come we're losing now? And he said, huh, what do you mean? You can't use old tools for new wars. We have to upgrade. And also we know that today we don't have the Yira at all and the COVID at all in the children, and our eyes and our looks and our that doesn't work. Everything changed. Everything changed. And all the Zakanim know, and they always said, you always have to adjust. It's the small people that would rather yell and scream and accomplish nothing. You ask them, 
Did you use these tools of looking bad, accomplishing, screaming, uh, screaming and, and Musa? Did it accomplish? No. Did it make things worse? Yes. Why are you doing it? So you, you are amazing as most TP parents, especially the ones, I mean, the ones who are in it, the ones who read the manual and who really are in it. You know, self-control, I'm not doing anything to this patient. If I want to get to the end zone of having a healthy child, begashmi is, benafshi is emotionally and beruchmi is spiritually and to one day have Yiddish anachas and to walk this child down to a chuppah kadas moishev Yisrael, the first thing I need to know is I'm not going to respond if I don't know what to do. Now, that's really the first answer. The first answer is do nothing until you know what you're, what you're doing is going to help. Because so many times parents say, so you should just do nothing? So the example that I give is, imagine, Rahman al-Litzlan, you see somebody gets hit by a car. They're lying on the floor. And you're going to go and help them stand up. They could be lying in mud, in sewage, in dirt, in the rain, in blood. Stand them up. And someone says, no, 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 no. If you stand them up, you can make them paralyzed and damage them for life. Would you answer, so I should do nothing? It's the silliest thing. Yes, you should do nothing unless you know that what you're doing is going to make the situation better for the child and therefore for you. So you did great. Hashem oiz la'ama yitain. Hashem yivarech is amay bashalim. My own vart. Hashem gives his nation strength. Hashem blesses his nation with peace. So I ask those two things do not go together. Because if we have peace, so why do I have to have strength? And if Hashem is giving me strength, Hashem is giving me strength, that's nuclear, right? That's the biggest strength. Why do I need peace? Let's have war and we'll wipe out the enemy. The answer is that it takes a lot of inner strength to have peace. You have peace in your home, it's going to take a lot of inner strength. I'm not going to say or do anything with this child or any child unless whoever is guiding me tells me that that's the smart thing to do for the long term. Because even if you have a short-term gain, you can have a long-term loss. You'll be paying those therapy bills, Rahman al other bills, or you'll be paying for it in different ways. On every kid, but especially somebody in pain, you can control them for a certain amount of time, but every time you force them and every time you pressure them, even if they do what you want, you are going to pay a severe price in the future because you didn't help them and you put a wall up saying, I don't care or want to know why you did this and what your struggle is. I'm the enemy. We're against each other. And you were you want to know how to say it and, and if to say it and how to do it right. Ashrecha, for your self-control. The Torah tells us that somebody who controls himself, we would say, what does it have to do with Yiddishkeit? It's a nice thing. What does it have to do with Yiddishkeit? No. It says that somebody who controls himself, So through this situation, waking up with smoke everywhere and you have a headache and you can't and you have kids and you just held your self-control, the Gemara says that Chazal teach us, you just had Yom Kippur. So please use your opportunity of being so Kaddish Fitahar to bench everybody in our group, the Seich Shar Yisrael, and please bench me as well because you're the holiest you're like right after Yom Kippur, you're clean. Well, I so what should you do? What would we do if this same child, Rahman al had cancer and physical illness? People say, oh, don't bring that up. Open up our minds. What would we do? So first of all, there would be no anger. We would approach a situation with tremendous Rahman. It's like you said, look, look how much she needs to smoke up. Even after she gets high, she does more and more and more. She is very sick. What is the destiny of these kids, usually without TP? Years of pain. Years of pain. Most of these kids end up, the family can't deal with it. We can't live like this. I got a call this week. I always try to share things that happen. And they put an order of protection against their child. I said, what do you want from me? 
where, where can we send our kid? Because she cannot live at home. I said, I understand that the way that things were brought you to a situation of such intense conflict that she can't live at home like that. But where is she now? By an aunt. What does the aunt say? She's sweet. So don't you realize you went for advice and the advice, unfortunately, from the therapist was rules, consequences, boundaries, rules, consequences, boundaries. All of that caused you to cause this neshama so much pain that she rebelled in a terrible way and threatened and all of that in the war. And every single time you responded the same way. Definition of insanity, says Albert Einstein, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You made the spiral. Every time she acted, you reacted. Tough, my house, you can't do this. And then it spiraled more and more. She got worse. Don't you realize? Look back. And you have a kid that your aunt, your sister, that her aunt says she's sweet and wonderful. Only in your house, she's so violent that you can't have her. The woman was quiet. I said, what I do, we have about a th over a thousand TP kids registered besides for other people listening. They're all living at home. And after the parents listen to me, in peace, the reason we don't do police protection, the reason we don't send kids to boarding schools, the reason we don't send kids to Utah is not because I tell parents, you can't do that and you have to live in hell. No, we make it not hell. We make it kid living at home and calm and peace. Now, another piece of something before we get to the answer. You're at the beginning stages. You're still a, a newborn of TP. If you come, if you let's say go to the Shabbaton, right, which we're having 130 plus people, you come to group and you ask other people, you ask on the chat, anybody here over a year, over two years, do you still have this problem? They don't. So this is a temporary problem. Like all of the problems, the idea is not really what I'm going to tell you to do for now, which I'm going to help you. But so many people are busy trying to, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with this? At the same, at, while all this stuff is going on, my kid is spending money. My kid is stealing. My kid is shoplifting. My kid is, we know they're messed up. They don't see anybody besides them. They leave the front door open. They don't flush the toilet. They leave the refrigerator open. Those are the problems and they're frustrating. The solution is TP. Make sure that you're both reading the manual an hour a day, watching videos an hour a day, because nobody can stop this behavior and save her. No psych ward, no medicine, no therapy, more than mom and dad. I've proven that. So you have to be on top form, which you are. Top form for everybody. Otherwise, things can unravel and you'll blame the patient. But it's your skill. If you're a nurse in a hospital and someone says, how, how professional are you? How much dedication do you have to studying how to be a nurse in the ICU when you say, I'm very busy, you know, I have so much going on. I really, I, I do like 70%. You would get sued. Parents have to know you are the nurse, you are the doctors, and your kid feels your presence, and they have to like you and want to spend time with you, and it's up to you to figure out how to do it. And until then, we're going to have all these problems. But once they calm down around us and, and, and look at us as a source of, of oh, people that understand me, this is home. Just today, I think they're on the call. Miss Kip told her parents, I want, I, want to, I want to read it because it's so beautiful. And this is what we do. And it's one after the other. This is our goal. And we achieve it fairly, fairly quickly if you dedicate yourselves. I'm not going to say the name, of course. Our son just posted this in the family chat. Yesterday, Chaim ate over Shabbos day and some cousins were here. She mentioned that some of her friends were eating across the street. And my husband said, you're welcome to bring over your friends anytime. That's part of what we do. When we're care of the friends, makes our kids feel accepted. And when we're care of those friends. And he said, I like to keep the house as mine. So this is a kip with all the definitions of insanity, total kip, Michal Shabbos, and all of this stuff and all the difficulties, but they made the house so comfortable that she's like, I don't want to share this house with my 
my, you know, she didn't say my crazy friends. I'll see them on their turn. This house, I want this to be mine. The house becomes comfort. Comfort. Reminds me of a vart, more than a vart, a gedank, an idea, a concept, an, an opening, an eye-boggling, mind-boggling, eye-opening thing. Yitzhak Zilberstein, Zilzayin Gesund, Shlita, Veliashev Zatal's son-in-law, Chaim Kanievsky's Zatal, Zatal, Zatal's brother-in-law. And Yitzchak said there's two names for the Chaydish of Av. We have two ways that we define the month of Av. One is Mishinichnes Av Mematim B'Simcha. When Av comes in, we make the Simcha get uh, lower. We, we lower the Simcha, the happiness. And the other one is Menachem Av. It's a month for Nechama. He said that an Av is a parent. The parents have to make sure that it's not Mishinichnes Av Mematim B'Simcha, that when mommy or daddy come in, all the kids, oh, oh, stop fooling, stop jumping on the sofa, stop being happy. This tension and anxiety coming, oh, we have to behave. It shouldn't be that when mom and dad come into the picture, it's mimat and besimcha, there's less happiness. What should it be? The parent, the role of a parent is to be a menachem of, a parent that consoles. This is my nechama. It's a crazy world out there. I'm, I'm on drugs. I have crazy friends. I have bad things that happened in the past. My life is in shambles. I don't know what's going to be in the future, but I have a nechama, my, my tati, my abba. I can hug him and he hugs me. And I feel rejuvenated. I feel it's someone who understands me in this world. My mommy, my, my daddy, they understand me. And that's why you have to study trauma because they know that you understand them when you become a trauma expert. Badukul Munusa, tried and proven. People know that they can come over even before all my videos. People, kids opened up to me because they just sensed that I know. You have to give them that sense. So you have to do the work yourself. And you have to do the program. And you have to do the things that are going to make us get out of here. So while we go through all of your questions, you have to think, hey, wait, how come people who are here for two years, three years, four years, five years, why don't they have these problems? Because they go away. Because when the kid has the medicine of TP, the problems go away. So the real answer for all of the questions of crisis that we have is to make the question go away. How? By giving medicine. What's the medicine? NKN, nafshik shur v'nafshik. Which is why, yeah, I'm stuck. I have to give answers along the way. But if you're not giving the NKN medicine, if you're not becoming closer every day and every week and texting and putting their, their, their faces as their profile and Googling how to become friends, a boyfriend, girlfriend, use those tools, romance, and how to go on a, on a vacation, how to go for a drive together, how to smile and say, I love spending time with you. Come, let's, if you're not doing the whole program of taking a broken heart and gluing it back together piece by piece, then you have the same questions for the next hundred years. So the real thing is when you go to the doctor, my kid has 104 and he's throwing up, what do I do? He doesn't have to tell you, get a pan, wipe his face. He has to give you medicine that the, that the throwing up should stop, that the fever should go away. And this medicine works. It just takes a while. You have to invest and you'll see it'll go away. So those are the things that you need to remember. To have self-control, not to respond until... Your guide is telling you how to respond. Don't make things worse. If you don't respond at all, it's better than if you respond and you make things worse. Number two, to have faith, to know and to see, because you're fortunate enough to be in the TP group, that we don't have this problem a year later, sometimes three months later, sometimes eight months later, sometimes a year and a half. The point is our medicine works to remove the kids from being in a fog that they don't notice. And all of a sudden, same kid starts to care, starts to be able to notice, stops needing so much weed on their own. We have hundreds of kids who quit weed and we never sent anybody to rehab for weed. Not necessary. Now, in answer to your question, until you make it that there's no question, is as follows. What would we do if the kid had cancer? So first of all, there's no anger. And second of all, there's no frustration. There's no saying, look, he's doing this and he keeps on smoking like a taina, like a complaint. No, 
Never. She or he needs to keep on going and going. You can't even breathe. But we have a problem. We have a problem because we're living in a house and there's other kids and there's us and it's not good for kids. Kids should not grow up in a house that smells like weed at all. So what's the solution? So we don't try to fix the problem by addressing the chayla. We fix the problem not by addressing the sick person. First of all, because I don't want to. I want them to heal quicker. Second of all, because it's very frustrating because they don't listen. And they forget. Oh, I forgot again. Lock the door. Remember to lock the door. Even if you do it nicely. I forgot. Remember to close your door when you smoke in your room. I forgot. It's just barking up the wrong tree. We're the, we're the healthy people. So here's what we've done. Number one, we put a door. You said you had a door. We put a, a, a nice hinge that closes it automatically. Better chance that it'll close. We put another door. We've done sometimes even two doors in a hallway, which at night or during the day, we close them. And there's a spring and we can keep it open so it doesn't drive everybody crazy during the day, the kids and all that, swinging doors open and close. And you, you get a little thing that makes it not slam and it makes it close slowly and it helps for noise and it helps for smoke. We do our job to play defense without playing offense. We put in air purifiers. We had one time a family put in four air purifiers. Yes, it's an expense. It's $1,000. It's $2,000. I feel terrible, but it solves the problem. One air purifier is not doing that, but four could in the baby's room, in your room, in the hallway. Usually in their room, they forget to turn it off. We have found that you could put in a kitchen exhaust fan, which is only like this big, that is used for for for, um, for kitchens, for not for home kitchens even, for main big kitchens, I forgot what it's called. And it's extremely powerful. And sometimes they will remember to, to, to put it on. So if they don't, you could, on Shabbos it's a problem, but for the rest of the week you could be like, you could just leave it on. Sometimes if it's too cold, it's too hot, they don't do it. But if you put this exhaust, really powerful um, kitchen fan in the hallway, in the ceiling right on top, and you make a thing outside, you'll have a chimney, but it'll get rid of 50%, 80%. And then the air purifiers will help. And then we found that there are certain sprays that don't smell like bad stuff, like bad yucky sprays, and it eats up the... And then we found, Shabbos, you can't do it, but maybe beforehand, there's vanilla candles, regular vanilla. I don't know. I never tried this. I never had this problem. Parents have told me they like vanilla candles. You can get some that lasts a long time, that like a dollar in the dollar store. And for some reason, vanilla seems to eat away completely the smell of marijuana, of weed. Very interesting. And if you go online, how to get rid of the smell, you'll probably find another 10 things. Do all of that before you waste your breath on a sweet kid who is going to forget anyway. Now, what you could do is not you, because or you you actually have self-control, but usually the other parent who, who wasn't so affected in a time, which is great, say, oh, by the way, kalachayad, like not head-to-head, -head, on the side. Oh, by the way, do me a favor. If you can remember, try to close the door, or maybe would it be okay if we put a spring because the baby, or because Tati's allergic, or because mommy. I had a kid who had a basement he was staying in, and in that basement, he would party. 20, 30, 40 kids would pile in cigarettes, weed. It was coming up, and the mother had asthma. Everybody says, tell them you can't do it. It's a waste. I don't know why people are saying that. First of all, I don't want the kid going in the street. That's how they end up on worse drugs. I want the kid to be there. But what about the asthma? We solved the problem. We put an air purifier outside his door. We put an air purifier right on top. We put another one, yeah, four air purifiers, and we lit some candle, and we dealt with the problem. But the, but the main thing is it's not forever. The problem went away because this is while they were doing TP, and they were getting through and accommodating the parties and coming down with stuff for the, for the friends, even though it was under very difficult conditions. And then in a very short time, relatively short time, the kids stopped. And now today the kid is showing the Torah who is completely clean, completely from, and he's in Shaduchim. 
So we have to think short-term and long-term. For the short-term, we think, how am I going to solve this problem assuming that I can't get this kid to change? Because first of all, I can't. And second of all, even if I can, I don't want to. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop the long-term healing. You tell her, you be, you be comfortable. Do what you need to do. If you can remember to close the door, that would be great. And then play defense. Save your family. It's the same thing with music. We have kids blaring rap music in the middle of downstairs. They're singing, Menucha v'simcha, or la And sometimes there's guests. Don't say a word. Number one, you never respond to a situation unless whoever is guiding you. And hopefully it's a guy that knows how to get you to that chuppah kadas moshe Yisrael without escalating the situation. Don't do anything. Second of all, think about how many kids we had at TP that did that. And Baruch Hashem, because that means that they're home and they're comfortable and they leave the door open and you want to say, close the door. Blah, blah, blah. Anything that goes blah, 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 is deadly. As soon as you're going, blah, blah, blah. as soon as you start talking like a monk, like a monk uh, blah, 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 you're done. If you have amazing NKN, hey, how's it going? Oh, wow, doing good. You stay up for five minutes. You listen to the music or you listen to things. You say, oh, do me a favor. Would you mind if it's not too much trouble, close the door? You could do that. But I'd rather you don't even do that. And even if you do that, you still need to play defense. You still need to have the air purifiers. He said, don't control my patient. How do you control them? Trips, gifts, boosting the self-esteem. Because kids who are like this, close to mom and dad, don't do this stuff anymore. And that's how you will know if you are successful at healing your child from the inside. Because they will stop the bad behavior. Kiyadua liyoyde kip. Baduk umunusa, a child who gets our medication cannot continue being abrasive and angry against their parents, except for their actual machlo. There's two parts. There's the actual stabbing. God forbid a kid is raped. God forbid by an adult, especially by someone where they hurt some another kid and they feel horrible and they're broken. You're dealing with the machlo. That's the actual infection deep inside the person, the internal bleeding. That's a problem. But then on top of that, around and around, duh, 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 the mother, the brother, duh, everybody's looking down at me, all of that. The people, I walk outside, everybody stares at me. We clear away all of that. And that's going to take away almost all the problems, except for the actual sickness. And then is, is the hope that we had today, where a family called me up today, that their son, after, I can look it up, it's probably four years of TP, their adult son, over 26, between 26 and 30, came over and said, I need help. I'm doing cocaine. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And they know that he went through trauma, but he opened up to them about it. I need to go to rehab. Can you please help me find the best rehab? And that kid has the best chance of being from the Yechide Segula, from the small percentage that are successful in rehab. Because he's going in because I want help. And he's going in not to talk about my father looks down at me and his father's a Chashev or Shashiva. And my mother can't stand me. And the mother is a very Chashev or Rebetzin. Very holy people. He doesn't have that. My brothers, my sisters look down, my neighbors. We removed all of that. It's just, I'm in so much pain. Because of my trauma, my deep trauma, please help me. Ah, oh, now we can go to a trauma center to heal the trauma. So he shouldn't need to, to numb himself. Now we can get help. And not only the parents are not the problem, but the parents are the, the legs under his table. They're his support system where he can say, I can go to therapy and you could be, you can come inside. Parents come inside. A therapist calls me all the time. Avi, I got another one of your parents. How do you know? I said, what kid like this, a kid, not from, messed up, all of that, comes into therapy and says, oh, my parents, they can come in the room. I have nothing to hide from them. That's your job, to win over such trust. And you can't win over trust if they perceive that you're against them. So if they had chas v'shalom cancer and you said, why don't you close the door? How come you don't this? What about saying please and thank you? I'm not your slave. Don't curse. Don't this, don't that. That will take that cancer patient and additionally will give them the feeling, nobody understands me. You forgot how good I am? I'm just in so much pain. 
and we would never criticize somebody who's physically ill ever. And here we always have the question because we don't see a little mark on an x-ray, but we in TP, we are experts on childhood trauma by looking at the symptoms and recognizing that nothing else causes this behavior. And we are experts in trauma and in dealing with people in pain. And therefore, we will not do anything that will cause the child to feel that we don't understand them and that we validate. Yes, we validate. We validate them. They have a right to curse. They have a right to be in pain. They have a right to be what looks like selfish and manipulative, manipulative because they're in so much pain because of what other people did to them. And when they feel that we feel their pain and we're on their side, then they have a team. And that's the Yeshua. That's the Yeshua. That means I'm not alone. Because trauma makes me feel I'm all alone. I'm worthless, but I'm not worthless. My parents think I'm the apple of their eye. My parents love me. My parents are on my side. So yeah, if you got to do that by letting them smoke in your car and blasting their music while they're in that stage in order in order to accomplish NKN, tying yourself, tying yourself, nafshoi, kshura bin nafshoi, to tie yourself and bind yourself to this lovely kid who now is lost and doing all this stuff. If you have to go ahead and pay for them to get all these terrible tattoos and piercings and, and pink hair and blue hair, that's their simon, that's their symptom that they're broken. But by you being with them, ima yanoichi b'tzara, I am with you to the extent that I'm with you, as long as your Das Taira agrees that it's not against halacha, which they will tell you it's not against halacha, then why aren't you doing it? Oh, because of these stupid things. How will they ever change if they think that I agree with them? Bankrupt. I've proven that. Bankrupt. If we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna show acceptance, they're going to get confused. Bankrupt. They're going to think that we gave up on them. Bankrupt. All these ideas don't work. When Hashem put us in Galos, He gave us one thing. I'm going with you. And there's a lot more to say on that. But the bottom line is what we're doing is not bankrupt. It's working really well. So we will do everything in the world that this child should feel. I mamish understand you. I mamish understand why you need to numb your pain. I trust you. And I don't need to see a video of Chas Shalom the trauma. Because I trust my child must be that they went through something horrific in order for them to act this way. No? Weren't they once sweet and normal and nice and fun? And those who have kids that were difficult their whole life, so what do you want from them? They had such a difficult life since they're born. Either way, nobody chooses this. They want to be gay and lesbian and they want to be confused and not want to get married and not live a life like us. No. Inside, they want everything, but they can't. It's all because of pain. If we deleted the pain from their lives, we have a kid just like all your other kids. So you have to delete as much pain as you can. You can't delete the, the knife in their heart, that trauma, you can't. But you could numb a lot of their pain with love and fun. You can delete a lot of their feeling worthless and the symptoms of trauma. You know how many emails I get and texts and stuff from people who suffered telling me, you know, you're the only one who understands me. Why, why doesn't my family and my neighborhood and all these smart people understand that I'm good and I want to be good, but I can't because I have such all this anxiety and social anxiety and I don't want to dress like everybody. I don't want to dress like my molester. I don't want to dress like the people who tormented me. I don't want to dress like my abuser. So I don't know how to dress. So I'm just so confused and I don't want to think and I can't think because when I think I want to die. So I numb myself and then everybody thinks I'm an addict. No, I'm normal. They're doing exactly what I would do, exactly what you would do, and what we do do when we go to the dentist and we ask for Novocaine. Because we don't like pain. And we would ask for Novocaine four times a day, every day, forever, if he's drilling. And they feel drilling all the time. So remember all of these things. Let's hazard it over. Number one, never do anything unless you know that it's going to help for the long term. Wait till you speak to someone that has the ability, the experience, the ability to know how what you're doing now is going to help that the problem should go away. Not that the problem should escalate. You got to tell your kid, you got to put your foot down. Very nice. I like it. I'm not against it. I'm against it for one reason. 
A month later, the kid's worse. Three months later, the parents are throwing the kid out because you can't live like that. You're turning the kid into a monster. You're escalating the situation with that advice. Only go to someone who's had to de-escalate so we can have what we have here is a thousand kids. Almost all the kids are living at home. The ones not, they're welcome at home. Let's say 99% are mamish pleasant at home. Let's say we still have 1%. That's not enough of a success rate. We have a few kids that are still, and, and the reason that they're in such pain, first of all, the parents need to move, and they didn't, because the trauma happened in that area or that house, or they don't have enough space around them, and that they can't, can't do everything that they need to do. But we have a very, very, very high success rate. So let's rely on that. And let's not tell the chayla how to behave. Let's play defense on whatever the situation is, because it's going to get better this way, because we go upstairs we have Sakra Banim telling parents when your kid is watching TV to watch with them. We have Sakra Banim to go around with phones because just like Atzala dispatchers, they pick up the phone. If your kid needs you, you have to ask your Rav. But I have never gotten a no for a kid who's outside and might need you. We have Sak all the time to go in an Uber to pick up kids who might be in danger. Everything we do is with Rabbanim. Every family has a Rav. And I have no Rabbanim, I have no issue the ones working with me. There are some Rabbanim that don't know me, never worked with me, and they think I tell people what to do. I don't. I say, I think this is what should be done. And if it steps on halacha, we ask your Rav. Everybody has their own letter from their Das Torah, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters, that they are going to paskin, which is so sad, different story. Family didn't come to me. They said, my Rav said he's not comfortable that they should listen to whatever you say. I said, excuse me, the material that I sent you specifically says we're going to listen to whatever he says. So what's there not to be comfortable about? Something comes up that's a Shiloh, where the four of us are going to get on the phone. He's going to pass, and not me. And I never tell him what to do. I just describe my situation. And the, the big rab on him, like my Rosh Hashiva, Rosh Shmuel Kamenetsky, Shlitel, Zazayin Gesund, he always says, so humble, Vasak Trebavi. What does Avi say? I say, Rosh Hashiva, they want to know what the Rosh Hashiva has to say. Das Tayyar, not me. Yeah, 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 but what do you say? I, I think this and this and that. Yeah, yeah, listen to Avi. He knows. He gave me smicha to paskin and this, but I never use it. So we do everything that we possibly can not to touch the chal. If you're going to, it's really short term, but it's with a smile and while you're listening to them and not right away. You don't walk in and say, blah, 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 blah. Because before you open your mouth, they know if you're against them or you're with them. So you send in the other parent, whoever's you know further away from being emotional, and you go in and first you sit for five minutes and you hug and you come with gifts and you come with drinks and you come with food for them and their friends. You show them, I am not against you. And you say, oh, by the way, and you leave. And you go back and you say, oh, by the way, do you mind if we shut the door? Do you mind? Okay. I still don't want you to do that. But that's if you mamish have no choice. I want you to heal them. I want you to be the next person who's going to give me witness, testimony in six months from now, nine months. Hey, that behavior doesn't exist. In conclusion, I ask all TP parents when you come to me to make a short list of things that you want changed. And I think that everybody manages to get those things fixed. And that's our goal. You'll know you're successful and you've done enough when you see Ooh, cross that off, cross that off. Oh my gosh, she cleaned her room. Oh my gosh, he took out garbage from his room. Oh my gosh, he asked, can I help? Oh my gosh, she vacuumed. Oh my gosh, she, he or she managed that when we went shopping for them that they unloaded the trunk of their stuff and they didn't just go upstairs and let their own mother schlep up four flights with the stuff that she bought for them. Oh my gosh, they didn't need to buy as much, you know, click, 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 click. Oh, they're getting better emotionally. And then when their head starts to have energy, they start to get better and be helpful. And then they end up being sweet. And then they start keeping tired of mitzvahs. Like just today, someone told me that kid puts on tefillin every day. They're, they're facing Hashem. They will get there with our encouragement and hands off. In the meantime, it's smelly. It's dirty. It's disgusting. A lot of bad stuff happens, but it's temporary. Temporary is up to us. We can make it permanent. The stuff that we criticize stays because that's their battleground. You're not going to tell me what to do. That's the reactance. Look it up. Reactance is a real thing. Google it. That's what they have. So if you take a stand, 
they're going to fight you forever, 100 years. We have people 20 years later, they're still locking heads. A guy called me up. Could you please call my parents? We're not on speaking terms. We don't have that here. We don't have that here. So, I mean, we have that. People come to me. But I mean, it's a shem. We have, we've had that the longest that we had it here was one family for a long time. But then we won that also. But we don't have these, these um, the kesher, the tie that are broken between kids and parents. When the parents listen, let's call it 99% success. That's enough for me. And hope and pray and daven and give tzedakah that you'll be part of that 99% success. And I look forward to your update every week, seeing her get better and better and better. But you got it. It's up to you. A lot of it is up to you to make her feel so comfortable at home and to trust mommy and daddy and to be a source of nechama for their pain, a source of, I could be calm around these people. And whenever we comment, it, it, it makes me tense. I can't be me. You know where I could be me? On the street, where this, the shorter the skirt is, the more they like me. The more buttons I open up, the more they like me. My, I could just be me on the street. But at home, do you mind just pulling? Do you mind? Can you just, could you just stop it? Put them in a cast. Don't ask them anything. Smile. Shine your light and love and like on them. Gift them constantly so they constantly in their brain are getting neural pathways of Wow, I can't believe it. Take them on trips, change their brain from negative to positive, and with Hashem's help, watch the TP miracle happen, which I've been zeichet to see happen over and over and over again. Not just mostly, but almost completely. Hashem should help all of you save your kids. And at the end of the day, like I always say, and like all the testimony has shown, they will forever be indebted to you and they will, they will take care of you for the rest of their lives. You'll see.